Today I've decided to do the most difficult rebuild in Madden 24, and that is the Carolina Panthers. On top of having the worst roster in the game, the Panthers sold their top draft picks for an undersized quarterback, who to his credit had zero supporting class last year, but he did look anything but a franchise quarterback. So today, through drafting a studly height, weight, speed wide receiver, for drafting the most electrifying player in college football, and a position change that gave us a man that will forever be known as the super weapon. We're going to try to go 10 years and turn the worst roster, the hardest Madden 24 rebuild, into a Super Bowl champion and into a dynasty. So there's no doubt in my mind, rebuilding the Carolina Panthers in Madden 24. And what we're about to embark on for the next 10 seasons is the hardest rebuild in Madden 24. I'm still a Bryce Young believer, but it is also fair to say... Not a great starting spot for him anyway. If we would have done this rebuild at the beginning of Madden 24, he would have been, what, 76 superstar death. Now we're starting as a 72 star. And truth be told, Bryce Young did not look particularly good as a rookie for the Carolina Panthers. And we are going to have to re-tap back into that elite franchise quarterback that left Alabama and not the player we saw year one in Carolina with zero supporting cast. Outside of Thielen, Chuba Hubbard, Miles Sanders, Jonathan Mingo, the Panthers said, you know, we got to get someone. They went out and made a trade. And for a couple of late round picks, they got Deontay Johnson from the Pittsburgh Steelers, who's essentially here on a one year deal. So we don't have a lot of long term commitment to him. But, you know, 28 superstar dev, 83. That's, that's a nice player. Considering we don't have a first round pick, it maybe makes it so we don't have to prioritize going wide receiver with our top pick in the second round, even though that's still definitely a possibility. And it's not the guaranteed money, but the Panthers game between Damian Lewis, 76 star dev, and Robert Hunt, 82 star dev, like almost $200 million worth of contracts for two solid to good guards. Don't know if that was the best use of funds, but protecting Bryce Young, keeping him upright, you know, you got to pay for that. Big picture on the defensive side of the ball. Um, yeah, obviously the gigantic trade where they sent Brian Burns for a second round pick this year to the New York Giants. Uh, I'd rather Brian Burns if you told me before the offseason started how I'd want to rebuild the Panthers. But it is what it is. They repaid uh, Derek Brown almost $100 million. Deserved it. We got the Horn Dog, J.C. Horn. They brought in Clowney on a two-year deal. They got Fuller from the Rams. Shaq Thompson, Josie Jewell in the insides. Not brutal, but you look at this roster. We need a pass rush. We need to flush out and get some supporting cast for Derek Brown on the defensive line. The secondary, even with the addition of Dane Jackson, who's, you know, serviceable. We have a gigantic drop-off after J.C. Horn in the corner room. So between corner, edge, D-line, younger at safety, Wide receiver, tight end, we got a bunch of spots and no premier picks in this upcoming 2024 NFL Draft. So while we don't have a premier first round pick, we still have the first and sixth pick of the second round. That is where we're going to have to do damage, even though we're not going to be able to get a rookie with a fifth year option. And look at the players, I have an idea of how I want this to break down. We have Brian Thomas Jr. somehow slipping out of the first round. Height, weight, speed, extraordinaire. Out of LSU, 6'3", A deep route running, B catching, B catching traffic, 4'3'5", elite speed, elite jumping, probably should have elite speed. That is an easy option. Because right now, there is not a lot of long-term, you know, we got Deontay Johnson, that's a one-year. Adam Thielen's probably going to retire. Mingo does have a dev trait still on the start yet, but a long way to go. Here is someone that is going to be able to grow and develop with this offense, with Bryce Young, as we go on. Oh, 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 the Chargers just want Rakestraw, the corner, which is great because I wanted to go Lassiter, the corner out of Georgia. Wasn't sure if he was going to still be on the board. This is probably the range he's going to go. I, I don't know if he's done enough. He didn't even have a huge pro day. But I do think he's going to go in the top part of the second round. We got three Bs in the C, six feet tall, can play on the outside, four three speed. Don't know if he's going to have a dev. Really hope he does have one. But I think the base rating is going to be good enough to justify. Hey, and he's going to play a lot as a rookie. Great opportunity to get that dev trade based off of playing time, production, and or defensive rookie of the year conversation. All right, next pick. We're kind of just going BPA at this point. Now, on the other side of Derek Brown, we got Ashawn Robinson on essentially like a one-year deal. He's a veteran. I like Rook Ororo. 
He had an insane call. He's like one of the most athletic D tackles that is tested. Now, he's one of those undersized, like Kaliza Cansey, who ended up being a first round pick for the Bucks last year. Yeah, he's a D tackle, but, you know, not, uh, different shapes and sizes. And he, these D tackles that are putting up these insane RAS scores, these S tier type combines. Well, they're also like 10 to 15, 20 pounds lighter than like a traditional D tackle. Either way, this guy will be able to kick out to a defensive end in our scheme. But no dev trait. Damn. Might as well stay in Clemson here. I got uh, Chuba Hubbard in the backfield. He's solid, but you know else? I'm a big fan of Will Shepley, who was the number one running back of his high school recruiting class. Was pretty solid at Clemson. And uh, that's not Will Shipley. I'd almost say younger. The athletic ratings aren't Will Shipley. And I know the letter grades kind of suck, but at this point, we need to take swings on the draft class. And we have Kyrie Jackson, Alabama transfer, went to Oregon 6'3", with 4'4 speed. Gamble, athletically, there might be a dev, and of course, there's not. And with our final pick of the draft, got to go with a legacy player, Musin Muhammad's kid, Moose Muhammad III. Dang, not that good. I, I almost got He will make the roster, though, just at a legacy alone. So it felt like we had a huge draft. Got, got one. Moose Muhammad, Wingo. I would love for a scenario for him to pan out. It's just, it's, you know, it's got to be, it's got to be a battle. Kyrie Jackson, though, 72 in the fifth round. Will Shipley, 71. Orohoro, 72, and he's going to move to DN, and we'll get everything kind of there corrected. 75 for Lassiter, normal dev. That's, that's my only problem. Ratings look great. A lot of normal dev trades. Luckily, with Brian Thomas Jr., we did get a 76 hitting dev wide receiver in the second round. So that's some pretty good value for a guy that's absolutely going to start for us as a rookie. I do appreciate old man Adam Thiel here in our first season trying to get more to Jonathan Mingo because big picture Mingo does kind of need to develop into something for us. As, uh, you know, let's work on short running. I think he'll be a slot player for us. Just you know, upside. You look at the upside. He is a dev trade player, only entering his second year. So kind of open he hits. I'm not going to lie. This might be our first opportunity to truly tank ahead of the 2025 NFL draft and maybe put ourselves in position for a certain you know who. You know, a certain you know who. Now I want to trim a little fat here. We have Miles Sanders, 75, still a star dev. You have the New York Giants who lost Saquon Barkley, so we're able to send him off there for a fourth round pick. All right, well, we just, uh, Dallas sucks. That's kind of a win. We have a breakout here on the defensive line, and it is for Rook or Hororo, who... I guess his name's too illegal to be in Madden, so we go with a modified name here. But he is still a very talented upside at D-end here. If we can get him off that normal dev against Dallas, which is likely going to be a loss against Dallas, but get a dev trait, that's a nice little silver lining. Pun intended. But we lost, and no dev trait. Cool. So at the midway point of the season, 2-7. and seven. Not good. Offensively, we have a top 10 passing offense, a top 5 passing yard. Actually, our defense is kind of impressive. All things considered, given our record, but it's clearly a rebuild year, and hey, we might have a shot at that. F wait, wait a minute. Okay, we currently have the third pick. I was going to say, do we still have, actually have a first round pick? Because if not, I mean, we don't have a second. That's kind of annoying, but we do have an opportunity to get the number one pick. We got $93 million of available salary cap. As much as I like Chuba Hubbard, the fact of the matter is we got Will Shipley, who's younger, cheaper. We just, we're not in a spot to pay a running back. Even if it's only someone, man. We need we need to get bigger fish. We got Shaq Thompson. Legend. Pretty much as expiry day. We got to be ruthless here. We can't just go for the greatest hits. You know, just because you played next to Luke Keekley doesn't mean that at the end of this three-year contract, you're not going to be like a 74 normal dev. All right? I think Corbett at center at 28. I, I like the fact that it's only a two-year deal, so we'll bump that up just a little bit. And we'll be able to keep him for the remainder of his prime. We got Jordan Fuller. Well, I, you know, pretty good value. Let's get him three year. Keep him. He has that dev trait under seven mil cap it every single season. Now, Deontay Johnson's an interesting one. It's pretty much a foregone conclusion that he's going to lose his dev trait. So it's like, how much do you want to pay for a 28 84 star? It's pretty close to his ceiling. I feel like a three year deal at that price point's not bad, but we're not really paying for a superstar beyond this year. I'll be shocked if he doesn't lose that and regress this offseason. So at the end of year one, honestly, I think it's a perfect scenario. Yeah, we only got four wins. Let's be honest. The Panthers next season, four wins. You want to be a little bit more optimistic than that, but four wins is potentially in line with where you're at. We split the series with the Saints. 
NFC South down bad. The Raiders, who lost 10 in a row after starting 5-2, and two, trying to out-tank us. Nice try. But we have secured the number one overall pick in the draft, which we can go a bunch of different ways. Travis Hunter, Harold Perkins, James Pierce, really good pass rusher out of Tennessee. But the fact that we tanked, and then you look at our rankings, it's not that bad. It's I was like, you know, it's if you tank and you have all 30th, there's nothing good, nothing you can take away from the offense. This is good, you know, middle of the park, total offense with a top five passing offense, which is huge and great for the development of Bryce Young. We know Dave Canales, the new head coach of the Panthers. We got a good system here, got a good scheme. The defense, pretty good, middle of the park with a top 10 passing yard defense. I've had defenses that are 92, 93 plus that don't have that good of defensive rank. So th what tells me is that the scheme is good. We just got to get better players because our play. This is the lowest we're ever going to be. We're not going to roster. Everything is not going to be as bad as it is here in year one, and we're already playing like this. Imagine once we actually have a complete roster, a competent roster, a playoff contender, a Super Bowl contender roster. Sky is potentially a limit here in Carolina. We had no award winners, but Brian Thomas Jr. finishes runner-up for Offensive Rookie of the Year, which is nice. Will Shipley also making the top 10 at the bottom there. For individual stats, Bryce Young finished top five, actually fourth in the league in terms of total passing yards, 4,100 yards, 23 touchdowns, 16 picks. The interceptions, a little high, I'll be honest with you. But 23 and 6 ain't brutal. Also, we got 350 yards, four rushing touchdowns on top of it. Not that bad, as you can see, just our... Our general rushing offense, uninspiring. But we did always have 3,000-yard receivers. Deontay Johnson, 80 catches, 1,100 yards, 6 touchdowns. Honestly, he might keep his superstar. We got 11-7 and seven for Mingo, played in the slot. Brian Thomas' rookie campaign, runner-up, offensive rookie of the year, 80 catches, very close to 1,000 yards, and 6 touchdowns. On the defensive side, Shaq Thompson led the team in tackles for his final year here in Carolina. We got nine sacks, 18 TFLs for Jadavion Clowney turning the clock back. Goddamn, 24 TFLs, six and a half sacks for Derek Brown, who just got that massive, gigantic $90 million extension. Not too bad. And on the interception front, three picks for the Horn Dog. And just, just show respect for guys that have been here, done that. Shaq Thompson, in his Panther career, finishes with 804 tackles, 55 TFLs, 13 sacks, and five picks. Ah, the Detroit Lions finally complete their story. Year one, win of the Super Bowl, 31-24 over the Jags. And on our squad, no depth chip regression. Johnson keeps his superstar. Quano keeps his superstar. The O-line looks good. Bryce Young, I mean, there was a slight chance with all those interceptions, but it's very rare you'll see a star regress to a bronze. Brian Thomas Jr. was a hidden dev. He pops with a star. On the defensive side, Derek Brown up to a superstar. Same with Jadavion Clowney, who's playing some of the best football of his career late. Better late than never. We are saying goodbye, however, to Adam Thielen, who has retired after 12 seasons in the league. And we have a pretty modest free agency period. Even though we had a lot of money, the market, we're not going to overpay. We got Milton Williams coming in just to add some competition to the other defensive end spot aside from Derek Brown. We brought back Tommy Tramble just because we have no tight end on the roster. And he's still somewhat upside -y, even though he is 25-72 normal dev. If we can't find a tight end in the draft... I think we could go with Tremble for another year. And then I brought in Jimmy G just because he has the mentor tag to get that extra XP for Bryce Young. They're now on the clock. Pick one of the first round of the 2025 NFL Draft. And since I created this draft class months ago, we've been trying to figure out a way. What is the time that we go out and get ourselves a Travis Hunter? A two-way player. I don't know if I'm going to use him at corner. I don't know if I'm going to use him at wide receiver. I'm leaning towards corner how our team is set up but i think we can have a little fun play them on both sides of the ball a little bit how am i going to do that in the sim i don't know do we do half the season corner half the season wide receiver just keep it wide we'll figure that out i i truly do believe much like ncaa because we have it in the honey hunter series madden the next evolution it's just let's let's remove a lot of restrictions here on on the depth chart side of things and let's go in favor of fun i should be able because i mean you can put your d tackle at fullback for an example right if I, if I can do that, if I can sprinkle in some defensive guys on the offensive side of the ball, yo, know, show the highest rate. You don't have to make it so it's everybody, I guess. Technically, how about we just show the highest rated? Show me my 10 highest rated wide receivers, regardless of position in the wide receiver spot. And if some of them end up being DBs, so be it. But either way, Travis Hunter, you are a Carolina Panther. Let's go. 
Next up, we need to address the nose tackle position. We got Kenneth Grant, who is a big part of that Michigan title win a year ago. 330-some pounds. Big-time athlete as well. Can rush the passer. Yes, and we get a dev trait. We're going to take a swing here. I need a linebacker that can play next to Josie Jewell. And the best athlete is Lander Barton. 6'4", 240. We got B-zone, C-tackle. Great speed. 4'5", at that size. Three cone, 20 yard shuttle, not brutal. Bench press as well. Best, especially for his pro day. And hopefully we get a good rating and a guy that will be able to start in the middle with an opportunity to go up dev trade because he's going to get a whole lot of tackles early and often. We also need some tight end depth. We did bring back Tommy Tremble, but why not double dip back here? State of North Carolina. Bryson Nesbitt, we got B, deep out running. Combine, not brutal. Elite strength, great speed, great jumping. Should it worse be? I think mean, we get a dev trait there. Let's go. And recapping our draft, a little bit of a bummer. We didn't have a second round pick, but we managed pretty well, I do think. And look at that. We can't even look at the depth that we got, the dev traits that we got. But the fact that acknowledging right off the bat, Travis Hunter, 81 hidden dev, two way players. Tackling's kind of the shits. We get 84 catching. Stats as a wide receiver are going to be like solid 96 jumping 96 speed 96 acceleration 94 agility it is going to be very very i'm going to make him a captain right away the hype is so it's going to be very very interesting when it comes time to travis hunter to actually go to the league how he's going to be i think he's going to be a db because i think he's like a solid wide receiver that's much better as a db than he would be like you know a db that can come play wide receiver if that makes sense i don't know uh, Kenneth Grant in the third round, 71 with the dev trait. Lander Barton in the fourth round, 72 normal. Nesbitt in the fourth round, 70 with a dev trait. We got Josiah Stewart. We got Amon Wari, big ass safety. Jaden Ott in the sixth round, 70. He has a shot to be running back two. And then we kind of rounded up with some special teamers. Laura Gallus from the U and Crenshaw, 71 punter from the Florida Gators. But all in all, three hidden dev traits and hitting an absolute grand slam. With pick 1-1 one, one with Travis Hunter, not going to have many better drafts than this. Let's go. Brian Thomas breakout season. Now the one. A little bit of my point of view, too. Hell yeah. Five and two. Quick turnaround for Carolina. And pretty much in line with what I was saying last year. You look at the rankings last season with, you know, it's all still a work in progress. We didn't have a massive leap in terms of talent. We didn't have a crazy free agency. Had a huge draft. But look at it. We have the top ten offense. Wish the passing guards were a little bit better. But the defense is elite. Third overall. First against the pass. Third against the run. To, it's a great path towards success playing great D like that. With $129 million, I thought about Clowney with the fact that there's no interest in him coming back. Uh, I don't think we should overpay for a three, even though he, he played his ass off. So it's a, it's a tough price point. Taylor Moten at tackle, also kind of a tough price point, given his rating. Horn Dog ain't going nowhere. Let's lock him down until he's 29. Moten will wait. We just have so much money, but that is such a big cap hit for what is like a bang on average tackle. But you know what? I mean, he should. He'll take that deal. Hey, you know what? Whatever. We got the money, I think would be the argument. If, I, if the salary guy was a little bit tighter, we'd probably let him walk and try to replace him in the draft. But we got so much money. Let's get him for two years and run him into the ground. Unreal. Rankings look good. But as of week 11, we were 8 and 2. One, two, three, four, five, six in a row. Uh, we didn't have anyone that was even remotely close for an award-winning type season. 4,000 yards for Bryce Young, which was top 10. 25 touchdowns, 13 picks. So we cut down the picks just a little bit. But 25 touchdowns cannot be the ceiling for him as a quarterback. Point blank, period. Running the ball, 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns for Shipley. Glad we kind of went on the cheaper route there. Not paid Chuba Hubbard, even though it hurts me. My patriotism as a Canadian. We got better production on a rookie contract for Shipley. Receiving 1,000 yards for Johnson, 1,000 yards for Brian Thomas Jr. A little bit of a breakout for him. Mingo was solid. Nesbitt, 
was solid. On the defensive side, Barton with a bunch of tackles. I think he was our closest to an award. He was six for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, we got nine and a half sacks for Clowney, eight and a half for Derek Brown. And on the back end, two picks for Horndog. We only get one for Travis Hunter. And I would try to put clips in, but it's just going to be so frustrating. I'd have to play like nine games to try to get maybe a pick with Travis Hunter to put him in a goddamn highlight. The Niners finally don't choke a Super Bowl. The good news as we end the season is running back Will Shipley, after an impressive season, gets off normal dev up to a star. On top of Grant, the nose tackle, who was a star dev, and Nesbitt, our tight end, that was a star dev. Lander Barton was normal, but because he led the team in tackles, he gets to jump from normal up to a star. The bell of the ball is Travis Hunter X Factor. Let's go. We got bottleneck. We got strip special. We got, I mean, we could probably bump those up a little bit, adjust those abilities. But man, oh man, him and Horndog in the secondary. Let's go. And even though I'm a little worried about the ceiling of our current offense, you know, it's changed that. We can always look at a new offensive coordinator if need be. So we are easily going to still pick up the fifth year option for Bryce Young. I mean, and the yards have been solid, man. He's been flirting top five in terms of passing yards. It's just been the touchdowns and interceptions that haven't been the best. So coming into this free agency spot, we had three kind of position needs. One was maybe get a little better at free safety. But the two big ones, we need two new starting edge rushers. We lack Clowney Walk. We haven't got a whole lot of production outside of that. So look at a job of this kind of a buy low developmental guy. 26 has a dev trait. And that, that would fit a need for sure. Why not? Why? We got the money. Come on. Pick the good guys. Pick the good guys. Pick the good guys. Pick the good guys. Fuck! Here we go on the clock at pick 17. Now, after missing out on Micah Parsons, I scout the pass. We still need pass rush. Even with a job of that's still a project type play. And looking at the available players, we have Isaiah Wheeler, who I'm shocked is graded out as a second, third round talent. Let's go look at the rest of the board here because I really did sell out for pass rush. Um, damn. I think the letter grades aren't great. But, I mean, who cares about half those stats? Those are not pass rusher stats. When you look at the actual pass rush stats, we got B pursuit, B finesse move. So, he's clearly like a second tier. But he has the athleticism. Great acceleration. Great change of direction. Elite speed. Good strength for the position. But the question is, like, do you... I mean, he's not going to even be available in the second round. And, of course, he's the uh, only... I, why couldn't Micah Parsons just sign with us? We have no other need. I need a safety. Potentially. And, of course, it's now you're just in the area of blind picking. And I don't even see anyone that looks... We got B-man covers, I guess. Uh, I'm going to just trust that that athleticism... His ratings probably sucks. If he gets second, third, he might be like a 70. But I think with those athletic traits, he should and does get a dev trait... And we'll show a little love to, you know, North Carolina. Let's keep drafting Tar Heels when we can, I guess. Worked out well last year with the tight end who popped with the dev. Yeah, chasing the safety. I mean, if I'm going to blind pick, I'll A hit power, A tackle, great strength, 4-5 speed. No real read on what the play rack, the man coverage, or the zone coverage. But, I mean, the man coverage could, I mean, at C, if we can get like C man, C zone. I don't know, man. My board's kind of shot right now. Have we got the dev trade? And again, I think, though, wouldn't be surprised if that base rating's not as high as we expect it to be. But yeah, you always go with the dev. You can develop these guys. Oh, no. I thought that was going to be a hit. I just went with the best athlete at linebacker. Man. I mean, I, I, I think his rating might be all right, though. And much like Barton. We drafted a normal dev rookie linebacker last year. He played a lot, got a dev trait. Yeah, Josie Jewell's still there, but Pope could do a, a similar trajectory. For late, day three has been an absolute shit show, but you can never go wrong with elite speed, acceleration, agility, change of direction, pick when they exist. And let's go, Joe Tucker. All right, so looking back at this draft, I, I hated day three, man. Just, I mean, we got the speedy wide receiver hidden dev, which kind of brings it all together, but there was... There was not much there. Pope, 74 normal dev. Not bad. Actually, pretty solid. If he had a dev trade, that would have been like an S-tier pick. 
Bethel in the second round, 73. He's more of like a big body guy, so I think we're going to take Jordan Fuller, who's our current starting strong safety. We're going to move him to free safety, so we can go with a double dev there. And then Wheeler. It was a reach, but we got the dev trait, 73. He's not Micah Parsons, but could he end up being? Probably not, but maybe. We'll be optimistic. Now we can look at how the teams of the division drafted, and with the top 10 pick, the Saints go and get themselves a hidden dev pass rusher. The Bucks kind of crush it. Top 10 pick, maybe not so much. Finnegan still get a dev trait. Very similar to how we drafted, but they got themselves a really nice 76 corner in the second round, even without the dev. And the Falcons, I mean, they picked late. Eh, meh, meh draft. Honestly, ours is probably the best of the division. We'll take that. Well, the fact of the matter is, um, every 10-year rebuild we've done, we haven't branded it. The hardest rebuild in Madden. Uh, we've also never flirted with two first overall picks, and that is the reality of where we're at halfway here through year number three. One win. Passing offense is pretty good. Overall offense, pretty good. Defense has been elite. It's only got better. We lost Jadavian Clowney, I guess, and, uh, I guess he was the guy that kind of put it all together. Pretty brutal. We got a breakout scenario here, ahead of our Week 9 matchup, winnable against the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to assume that this is going to be for Brian. Oh, it's Mingo in the slot. Okay. He's a player that has a contract extension coming up. Let's see if he can hit this. Shit, we got the win. Okay. Two and six. Okay. Damn. I will say something that is cool is Bethel, our safety superstar dev, and Wheeler, our pass rusher, which... Weren't really over the moon about it. was kind of just like, you know what? We didn't get Micah Parsons. It is what it is. He's kind of a good player. First, second round, maybe. Superstar death. Let's go. Now, take a look at contracts. Austin Corbett, starting center. A little pricey. Robert Hunt, starting guard. 12 mil for one year. Little pricey, but I don't hate the rental idea just because we're going to have so much salary cap. It's not going to make that much of a difference just to have him as a Band-Aid. And maybe we look at the mid-rounds at going and getting a potential successor. Iquanu, need him. Need, definitely need him. We'll see if we can get him on a six-year 143. Backing up the Brinks truck to get Iki Iquanu staying there at tackle. Last up is Jonathan Mingo, who I, I think he's been solid, but... You know, everyone kind of has a price point. I'd feel comfortable for 28, anything higher than that. A little too rich, right, bud? We'll keep him here on the team. All right, going on a win streak here. Hell yeah. All right, getting back into it. Bryce Young started to sling that thing. We It's the inverse of last year. We lost six in a row. We are on five. We just beat the Lions 42 nothing. Three picks. Travis Hunter. We finished with another 9-8 and eight season. And even though we have... A pretty good offense. We had no tiebreakers. And we were pretty much the best team to not... I mean, we're in that, you know, Broncos, Giants, and us. It's very painful. We won two in a row. And still two teams in our division get in over us. I will say, great year out of Bryce Young making the MVP shortlist. He finished just outside the top 10 in yards, but top five in touchdowns. Finally, starting to get some big-time production out of our young quarterback. Will Shipley played well. He also was runner-up for quarterback of the year, just behind cheesy Dak Prescott. Our superstar, surprising superstar pass rusher, Isaiah Wheeler, comes runner-up for defensive rookie of the year. This is what we call immediate return on investment. Travis Hunter, DB of the year. In a season where he was second on the D, 96 tackles, four interceptions. Outstanding. I, I, you know, I hope that that is now the baseline going forward. Uh, Isaiah, wait, I mean, look at that. That's not bad for a developmental pass rusher. 75 tackles, 12 TFLs, nine sacks, seven and a half, 20 TFLs for Derek Brown. Those guys are stepping up. But we still need to find a premier pass rusher. And something in the draft caught my eye. Something that could get me to sabotage future drafts, if you know what I mean. We scouted pass rush, and Colt Fisher, he's projected right now to go first overall. We don't have, we didn't make the playoffs, right? So we're going to have a pick in the teens. It's not like we're trying to trade up from pick 25 to 32. But we get A block shed, A tackle, A awareness, A play rec, A power move, at worst, B finesse move, at worst, B pursuit. 
and the physicals. Chance of elite ceiling for speed, for strength, agility, and acceleration. We missed out on Micah Parsons. What is it going to cost to get this guy? I, I hope between now and the draft, he falls. If we can get him, if he's, you know, the last mock draft has him going two or three. Might be that much more. I, I'm entertaining, though. A Bryce Young-esque trade here from the Panthers to go get Colt Fisher. Head out to the Ravens and Lamar Jackson for going on and winning the Super Bowl. Well, we did lose the superstar Devon Deontay Johnson, which I think that's probably more a reflection of his age. We gained a superstar on Bryce Young just ahead of what is going to be a very expensive contract extension for him next season. And as talked about before we finish, two superstars there on the back of the defense and arguably the best young DB in the NFL. I will say maybe a little disappointed. Jabu lost his dev trait, which puts even more pressure on us to potentially go out and get a pass rusher. And I thought Derek Brown had a good enough year, could have back up to a superstar, but unfortunately not the case. Thought about a Glenn McNeil in free agency, but got scared off because, I mean, he'd be great on our front three. He could go on the other side of Derek Brown, 6'2", 315, scheme fit. And then I saw he's looking for $23.5 million per year. No, thank you. We are very much going to prepare for life with Bryce Young's gigantic contract. Can't be thrown around that kind of money. So really our big plan this whole offseason was to just sit and wait to see where we'd have to go. And right now it's pick three. Could lie to us, but it looks fairly consistent ever since. Mock draft two is where I saw Cole Fisher go on top five. And I was like, ah, great. Now he's kind of fallen, which is surprising. Only thing that makes me think he's falling is maybe some of those elite physicals are greats, which they are. But I, I, I feel pretty damn good that they, you know top fit for our team. We at least explore what it would cost to trade up to the third pick in the draft. I've learned my lesson. I've been lied to enough. I'm not going to make that trade until I make sure that he's going to be there on the board to the Bears. So let's go. First pick is the Dolphins. They go the end. Second pick, uh, the Cardinals. All right. So everything has kind of played itself. What do they want? It's from 16 to 3. It's probably not going to be cheap. So they want our first this year, our first next year, our second next year, and a five. I feel like that's reasonable. I, I feel like with, you know, we play realistic rebuilds with the upgraded. We don't go max difficulty on trade settings, but we bump it up one. So I don't think we were going to get out of this without giving up two first-round picks. And we're not farther enough along in the rebuild to trade like a pick that doesn't matter. You know, like pick for year 11 because we only go 10 seasons. So I think all things considered, I'm going to trust my gut feeling that this pass rusher is going to be worth that. Now, if he's not, I've got bamboozled before. I, I would say that I drive very well, clearly. I think some of the entertainment value of my rebuilds is seeing how well I can draft. That being said, I just, there's no way this guy sucks. It would be better if those were, you know, even if we got one or two elites. He was projected to be elite strength, speed, agility, uh, acceleration. If only two of those. If we got like elite acceleration and strength, or elite acceleration and speed, I would feel a little bit better. But, let's go with it, man. We missed out on Micah Parsons. We get a dog. 6'4", 250 at a Clemson, which... I found out very late, embarrassingly late, that Clemson is, you know, in Carolina. Now, see, that's where, I, that's where my Americanism, I know North Carolina and South Carolina are different, but is it still, like, generally the same? Like, if you're from, do you say you're from the Carolinas? Because, like, obviously North Carolina, UNC, getting them here for the Panthers, there's a connection there. But it's, it's, do they have the same kind of vibe for South Carolina, for Clemson-type players? I don't know. But either way. I think this guy's going to be a dog, happy with this pick. And hopefully, now the pressure's on us. Any time I trade a future first-round pick, we got to make the playoffs so that first-round pick is not a top-15 selection. That first-round pick's in the tw closer to a second round than it is a first round. Our line lost a lot. We do need a new starting center. We do need a starting guard, maybe more so long-term. I'm liking the look here of Jeff Montague, who has A pass block, A awareness, and the combine looks pretty good. Let's go. And I think with that size, gives us flexibility to play anywhere on the interior. Nice looking linebacker. We scouted outside linebackers. More so for the edge rushers, but you get to sprinkle in some interior guys. They're going to play off ball for us. Diana Gardner. Two Bs and an A. Combine pretty good. Mm, damn. No death. See, I can be duped. Not everything's a hit.
Could be nothing. This guy could be garbage. UDFA QB, three Bs and an A with good throw power. You know? Bryce Young could hold out. We might not be able to get a contract extension hammered out. He hasn't proved a whole lot. If he comes here barking for 300 mil, might need to think about it. A moment of truth. Draft recap. I'm going to say... 78. 78 would be my prediction. It's a safe prediction. Yeah, we get it. 80. Let's go. It's not outright the box. Generational. Generational is... You know, if he has like X Factor, I'd say generational. But usually you want like 82, 83, 45, 86. That's kind of where it goes up to the bubble. And you always get the dev trait usually to go with it. But 80 is good. 80 is great. Look at the stats on this guy. Beast. Then we got Montague, 75 with a hidden dev. Gardner, no dev, but 70. Not bad. Uh, 68 UDFA quarterback. That's not bad when you're middling around those bottom picks. 68. You know, he can come in and do a job there. But top end of the draft, first two picks. Those guys are going to be long-term contributors to our team. And I think Fisher could spearhead the resurgence. He could be everything we thought Brian Burns was going to be and better. But of the rest of the division, pretty good draft here by the Saints. Getting a bunch of 70s value there, but a big pick is a quarterback, Justin Hartley, who looks pretty average. Falcons don't have a particularly great draft. And the Bucks were kind of middle of the mall, to be with, honest with you. So I'll take uh, another successful win for the offseason for the Carolina Panthers, the good guys. Now, because we don't have a first or second round pick in the upcoming draft, I had to slightly cheese, if you will. I traded our depth here. We have Kyrie Jackson, who is uh, 75, moved in from court. He's just a DB, well-rounded DB, only 25 years old. We have a job who did lose his dev trait, but still a decent edge rusher and would start on the Patriots at right outside linebacker. We also threw in our fifth and sixth round pick this coming year, as well as just six and seven to kind of get this one over line to get the third round pick from the Patriots so that this year's draft, we do have two threes and a four, which at minimum... You know, should be able to try to facilitate some decent linemen in the draft. That's kind of a money spot for them in that third round. Get off to a really hard start. 2-0. Weekly award winner. 38-22 with a Fisher. That is how second career game as a rookie pass rusher traded up two first round picks already showing signs that he's going to be routinely a defensive player of the week. The big thing for me, it's only week two, but the longer we delay the inevitable which is paying our quarterback the worst it's going to be. Because if we wait, it say, to week 10, he could be at 87, 88 overall, and that's 175. It's now 225. It's now 235. So getting ahead of contract negotiation for Bryce Young is a priority. So I want to get him locked up for the remainder of the rebuild. Six years, 225 mil. He wants a little more. Okay. Hey, let's hopefully we don't get into holdout territory like we did with Caleb Williams a couple rebuilds ago. Going to renegotiate here. Six year, 200. 31. Now we can look at paying everybody else. We have our quarterback for the remainder of the rebuild. The guy I just want to kind of set and forget, Brian Thomas Jr., one of the faces of this rebuild. Six years, 111. Our wide receiver one locked in with Bryce Young. I think Will Shipley has done enough to earn a starting gig. This would be a very reasonable contract. And it's good that we can get a couple deals here and not overpay for everybody. Probably shouldn't. Don't get a lot of money, but legacy player. And with Deontay Johnson, some of these older guys on the way out, maybe there's a chance Musa Hamid later on this rebuild can catch on. I want to at least pay him to give him the opportunity to maybe be in the right place, right time. And last, there's the last person. 24-81. Doesn't have a dev trait yet, but we get him locked in four years under $4 million cap it every year. It's a bargain. Might as well keep him on the back end, and maybe he'll finally get a star dev role here soon enough. And then if you're forward, there we go. The success. It, we had to be patient. I'm not going to lie. We were like 8-2. and two. And then we had our classic, what well, we've been able to kind of have a little bit of a trend here of a late season slip up. We ride the ship a little bit, 10 and 7, got our first NFC South title of the rebuild. And you look at the ranks, I'm kind of glad. You, there's another rebuild. I might have got off the, the cliff super early and fired everybody. Fired Canales, got a new offensive scheme, got a new defensive scheme. But I've seen the potential. And that potential is really good from top to bottom offense and defense. Bryce Young is slowly starting to play in, in S, you know, we got the, the big payday now. So I pretty much, he needs to make this list. I'm not saying he has to win it, but I want to see him be top 10 every year because he's getting paid like an MVP candidate. And he's playing like a top 10 quarterback, seventh in yards, eighth in touchdowns, and the interceptions, especially the high number of picks that we saw in year one, have gone down drastically. The rushing numbers, 
that we're getting from him are kind of fading a little bit, but that's not his job. Will Shipley is a runner. And Colt Fisher ends up defensive rookie of the year. That is the immediate return on investment we were screaming for. But I mean, when you look at the numbers, somewhat humbling to say the least, but good enough for the dev trade. Nine TFL, six and a half sacks. And like, I don't know, man. It's like our defense is so good, but the box score numbers aren't there. So it's weird because, like, on one hand, you want to fire him. But look at Cole Fisher. It is an X factor, a generational pass rusher, well worth the two firsts and second round pick that we gave up essentially to go get him. Just quickly showing the receivers here. 2,000 yard receivers. Brian Thomas, best year so far of his career. He's only getting better. 95 catches, 1,200 yards, 12 tuds, 1,007 for Mingo, 7 8 for Johnson, and 7 and 4 from Nesbitt. Damn, handle business. Get our first playoff victory 21 17 over a good Seattle Seahawks team with an outstanding performance, a gutsy performance from Bryce Young. Three touchdowns on the day. In the division round, we meet the 12 and 5 a Green Bay Packers. are also pretty solid. No real glaring weaknesses for the team. Should be a competitive matchup at Lambeau Field. <sighs> Damn, and we had to fall just short. I mean, they're the one seed. We took them to overtime. This is our first real sniff of playoff success, but Bryce Young needs to play better than that, man. Oof. Oof. Wow, shout out to the Chargers. Ended up going on to defeat the Packers in the Super Bowl. Our defensive corner actually got poached. So we're going to have an opportunity here. Maybe to experiment maybe with a defense that could get more sacks, more turnovers, while still under the umbrella of a 3-4. Let's try out the Rams. Actually missed this. Robert Hunt won lineman of the year. So he's up to a superstar dev. At least offer him a deal. Yeah, all right, there we go. For our lone free agency side of this offseason, it's kind of on brand for how we've handled free agency thus far. we got a nice, youngish guy with a dev trade here, Leonard Taylor, to go on the other side of Derek Brown. Just because we don't get a lot of premier, you know, we don't even have a premier draft pick. we got to have second round, third round picks. I need a center. I need a right tack. Like, we got to go O-line here. I can't really be stretched too, too thin. Maybe grab a safety if I'm looking for I would say those are the big needs. Center, right tackle, safety. Damn. I had six names, and we're down to two. I had guards, tackles, guards, big guards who could play tackle. I had a couple safeties. I thought I had a second round pick. We got two thirds. I mean, at this rate, if we can get both these centers, because they both look great. We'll start with Mason Wagner. B run block, A awareness, elite. He's a big time athlete. There we go. At least we got one starter. All right, that center's really the only guy I got left on my board. So. I'm trading my third round this year, fourth round this year. So we're trading out of the draft. We're giving up fifth and a fifth in future years to move up about 20 spots in the third round. We also get back a fourth rounder next year, but this is going to be a two-pick draft class, and I'm getting two freaking center. Probably not the best process, but I'm also fairly confident this guy is also going to be a dev trait lineman, big-time athlete, and just stack those guys on the O-line. So not bad. 73 hidden dev, 72 hidden dev. You'll take that, I guess, every day of the week versus a bunch of 60s that are never going to see the field. Saints had a pretty solid draft. Nothing too spectacular. Bucks put in a little work there. Get a nice 75 pass rush out of South Florida, but only a normal dev. A similar drafts all across the board within the division, but like the Bucks, Falcons go pass rusher, and this one, they actually get a hidden dev player. Just to give an update of the squad as we roll into year five, because we had a lot of moving pieces on the offensive line. Robert Hunt coming off an offensive line of the year award. We're going to kick him out to tackle. He has guard tackle flexibility, and we're going to go with our two picks. Reese, the smaller of the two, at center with Wagner at guard. The other position that I just couldn't address in the draft was safety. So Taylor Demerson, who is a member of the upcoming 2024 draft class, uh, kind of a sleeper at the safety spot, was on free agency, 76, only 26 years old. So I was like, yeah, screw it. Get him on a one-year rental. But other than that, man, I just really want to see this pass rush get after it. Maybe the addition of Leonard Taylor III, our lone main free agency signing, can help add a little bit more consistency, take off some of the double teams. And I'll be honest, it doesn't have to be fish. Yes, he's the X Factor. Yes, I want him to pan out. But if Wheeler's the guy that gets like those Jadavian Clowney numbers, defensive player of the year type bubble in that conversation, I'll take it. Just give me one of these two to pop off this season. That's all I want to see. Look at this. Season opener. We are down by six. And with zeros on the clock. Let's go. What a win. I was just here trying to get a clip. Super Simmon. You know, just checking it out. Seeing, honestly, trying to see if I can get something with Travis Hunter. 
We were up 28-21. Bucks get a score. Go for two to go up 29-28. And a walk off Brian Thomas Jr. Tud. That is huge. What a season opener for Bryce Young as well. That is outside of that touchdown off sim. So he was three, 270, three touchdown, no picks. Pretty damn good. Andre oh, man. It's all been fucking downhill to two and five. Why is it so hard? Why? Why? I've simmed. Look at the Cardinals franchise. The Panthers are juggernauts. They're like the best team, not Arizona in the NFC. Why is this? Why do we have it? It's shaping up like one playoff appearance. One playoff appearance in five years with a fucking really good team. Look at that. 30, oh, 32nd ranked defense. We were like top three last year. And we only got better. And we drafted a fucking superstar X-Factor pass rusher. We have a 99 X-Factor corn. Ah! 85 million bucks. Let's take a look at some contracts here. Up first, we got Derek Brown. He's been solid. He's been reliable. Worth the lofty price tag. Usually you don't want to pay a whole lot of money to like a guy that's primarily a run defender. But he's been solid. Kenneth Grant, what's he looking for a year? Ah, that's a little too much. Man, D-tackles are getting paid nowadays. Nesbitt. I mean, he's been solid. It's just... It's, it's that price point. I'm like, that's a lot of money. And I wonder if we can get it for cheaper if he hits the open market. I do want to bring him back. But what he brings to the offense, six, 700 yards a year, not worth 8 to $9 million cap it, I don't think. Now, I know it sounds like I am penny pinching and trying to think and not use my heart and, and value different positions differently. And you don't really want to pay middle linebackers, especially linebackers at this time to cap it. But Lander Burton, 80 start of it, only 23. So... For the remaining five years of this rebuild, he's going to get better every year. He's not going to hit his ceiling till the last final year. So what is his ceiling? If he's going to grow every single season, and ideally our defense sorts their shit out, his ceilings are like a 90-some overall player. So I'm going to maybe go against my slightly better judgment and actually pay a middle linebacker. Well, the, uh, the, the passionate spirit speech and by speech i mean just me voicing my frustration seemed to have motivate the squad we go 10 and 7 comes second place in the south well, look at that we write the ship top five defense top almost five offense we were dead in the water after two months outside of kicker shout out to our kicker we didn't have any award winners bryce Young, 3800 yards 30 touchdowns nine picks 1200 yards 10 tuds for will shipley 1200 yards 12 touchdowns on over 100 catches for mingo in the slot 1,000 yards, 11 tutties for Thomas. Nesbitt looking for a payday again. Had to kind of break the mold of what his ceiling has been in this offense and did not do that this year. So I think it's advisable not to uh, not to re-up there. Uh, Barton with a great season again. I don't know what we got to do, man, to get some sack. It's 3-4. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's just that, like, are we going to go production, which is bad. And with this kind of production, it's just going to cannibalize all the dead traits. X-Factor for Fisher. X-Factor for Travis Hunter. I mean, he's not getting, you know. But we're also a top five defense. So it's one of those, it's a weird spot. Because do we try to go and try to reinvent the defense and at just just chase the box score number? I think we got to, honestly. I'm, I'm kind of leaning at a point right now that this is fucking brutal. We have stars that are being severely misunderused. And I think above what our base ranking is, five, whatever it is, I think that's great. But it's not going to be sustainable if all these good players are losing their dev trade because they're not actually justifying their dev in the eyes of, of production, if that all makes sense, right? So I think we're going to get creative this offseason. Unless, I'll, I'll say if we can go and get to the NFC Championship game, go on a Cinderella run. Maybe I'll stay at the 3-4, but other than that, man, fuck 3-4 defenses in Madden 24. Well, at least we uh, ripped that Band-Aid off early. Double overtime loss to the Cowboys. Yep. And we couldn't find a better switch for a 4-3. Bills. We just did a Bills rebuild. Outstanding production on that defense. Greg Rousseau was a goddamn legend. This is going to work. It's going to work. A right, final snapshot of our defense as a 3-4 underperforming unit. And here's a new look at our 4-3. The defense stays good. The only kind of bummer is Leonard Taylor becomes surplus a little bit on the interior. But, I mean, hey, Grant's about to hit free agency, so that should actually work out pretty well. We are down, you know, one starting caliber linebacker, but we'll run primarily nickel. So we're going to be able to go into this offseason looking for more of a long-term option at free safety. But other than that, you know, pretty seamless transition.
At least we got to deal with the team in the division win the Super Bowl before us as the Texans with Chris Jones. Wow. Defeat the Falcons there in the Super Bowl. So in free agency, got ourselves a safety. Andrew Makuba, former big-time recruit for Clemson, transferred to Texas. 25-78 with a star dev, so he's going to be a plug-and-play starter for us. So that means we're going to go into the draft. Really, the biggest need would be trying to find a big-time tight end addition. I also think, thinking long-term, right tackle could be a big position of need for us to go out and grab someone. All right, so tackle is kind of thinking a little long down the road. I did scout Adrian Davis, thought he'd be available at pick 19. He is. The letter grades look good, but the talent kind of scaring me off a little bit, if I'm going to be honest with you. we got a couple other first-rounders there that I really do wish I scouted. There's a lot of upside there. Vince Atkins and McLeod. Obviously, there's... there's I mean, that's he's pretty good. Vince Atkins looks pretty good. This guy looks pretty good. It's a tough one. Let's walk. Let's, you know, that's why we're going to discuss some of these picks. Talking through it. The reason why is, look at this guy. Second, third round. Assuming he's still in the second round. Three A's and a B. Six, six. Like, that's going to be the guy. Four, five at that speed. So I almost think right now we just swing on a tackle. We'll go with the best athlete, Vince Atkins. It's tough. It's a crap shoot. I'll go with the bigger one. Fuck. Well, I was about to throw my control if this tight end was gone. Please, you gotta be a death freak. Got to be a... All right, how about this? Another freak show athlete. Linebacker, we don't, you know, could add a little bit of depth there. Can we get a dev trade? No. Well... Um, for no dev traits, not bad. 74, 74, 73. Atkins was never going to start. He's going to go behind Robert Hunt at right tackle for a year. So it's not like we could, you know, put him at risk of losing a dev trait, which is a win. And Weber's going to start at normal dev. So maybe an opportunity. I mean, tight ends just aren't really a focal point of our offense. But I mean, maybe he gets offensive rookie there and gets that easy dev trade increase. But damn, man, it feels like I was lied to. Those guys look like locks for dev traits. Luckily, we, I mean, we've already stacked and drafted X-Factors and Superstars, but doesn't make it sting any less. Ooh, Saints had a draft. 75 wide on the third. 78 big dog here out of the U. Jesus. Bucks crushed it, too. Number one overall pick. They get a 75 hit and have pass rusher out of Notre Dame who looks... I mean, pretty athletic. And the Falcons get a, hey, for the tail end, the ass in the first round. Hey, at least someone else got good player, no dev trade. It wasn't just us in the division this year. I noticed going into training camp here, it's like Barton, the linebacker, we hyped him up. He was star dev. Gets the superstar Super Bowl week. So, fuck yeah. I'll take that win. That's better than any, at least it breaks even from getting no dev traits in the draft class. And the midway point of year number six. Beat the Eagles. That's a legit win. In the NFC, Bryce Young, four tuds, hell to the yeah, brother. And the, don't look down, the Panthers, who have yet to really have an impressive season. We got two ten and sevens. We might, we, this could be our first big year. With $84 million of available cap. It's good wiggle room. Taylor, replaceable. Pope, replaceable. Tucker, replaceable. Uh, I mean, he's a hell of a weapon. He's a hell of a weapon, but let's be honest, he's still a third wide receiver. And we got Moose Muhammad. Horndog. I mean, Horndog's going nowhere, all right? I got a special place in my heart for a Horndog. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay, and we're going to keep our secondary. Bethel's been solid. Let's get him locked in. And then we got the money man. Get Travis Hunter locked in for the remainder of the rebuild and worry about the rest of the salary cap later. I had to see it to believe it. 15 and 2 to the good guys. Bryce Young played well. Sixth in MVP voting. And I think he got dogged a little bit. The guy with the best record in the league. Third in yards. Second in touchdowns. Interceptions. Not a problem. What is nuts is in the... <laughs> is this what our offense is missing? The 6'7", 265 freak tight end Darnell Washington is our fullback. And we got something here. I'm going to get, 
I think we're... You know what? I'm someone that rewards players. And if it's 6'7", 264-pound running back is what we need to spark this offense go 15-2, you better believe we're going to do it. General Dave Canales getting coach of the year with the best record in the league. But no award winners, man. Mingo played well. 100-plus catches, 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns, 12-12 12 12 for Thomas. Didn't really have the breakout we're kind of hoping the rookie tight end would have. Defensively, Barton with a bunch of tackles. Ooh, getting some sacks. Of course, of course, it can't be the X-Factor pass rusher. But it's the superstar one on the other side, Isaiah Wheeler. 60 TFLs, 13 sacks, 6 half for Fisher, uh, 6 half for Brown there. Picks 3 and 3 for Horndog and Hunter. I'll take that. The Horndog Hunters. Hype's about. Let's see what the hype's about. He's a machine. That's why Dave Canales is the GOAT. Man, this is like Cam Newton on the goal line again. Let's go. It's unstoppable. Patrick. He will not be denied. Mike Tolbert. Cam Newton combined into one. So after letting Darnell Washington and company feast, we are now in the championship game against the 11-6 Packers with a chance to avenge our loss last year. Let's do it live. Super Bowl on the line here in year six. For the Carolina Panthers. Can we finally get over that hump? And it... Of course it's Kansas City. God damn it. But Bryce Young did enough. But my God, look at Pacheco on the other side. You can't look at this matchup and say it's not best on best. Look at the ranks. Everything speaks for itself. But it, it does feel weird being 15-2 and two and being as good as we are and feel like we're the underdog in the Super Bowl. But let's go see if we can shock the world here in year six. Let's go. Bryce Young, Will Shipley, Thomas, Brian Thomas Jr. Tries to stop Mahomes, but Checo just went freaking nuclear. Oh, so their run game's on point, too. They just got Mahomes, who's a cheat code, and now they can run the football a lot. Very weird. First quarter. Who's going to score the first points? And the good guys get a touchdown. Let's get another one. Let's go. 14 zip. Don't blow this. Please don't blow this. Get some points here. Fourth and ten. There we go. Up ten. We got it. This is even more impressive than me coming in, getting some gameplay, and, you know, moving the needle. We just beat. And of course, we make it look close at the end. We just beat the Kansas City Chiefs in the sim, in the Super Bowl. That's as impressive as winning five Super Bowls. We just did the impossible. The Carolina Panthers... Our Super Bowl champions, and they beat the best to do it. The, a, a man, a famous person from Carolina, once said, to be the man, you got to beat the man. We just did that. Congratulations. And you know what it was? It was the big brain decision to realize, pardon my French, fuck three, four defenses. I don't know. It just feels like every every time we do a three, four defense, it, it puts me in a bad mood. We, we decided enough is enough. We switch to a 4-3. We go 15-2. Bryce Young plays outstanding football. We get, unlock the potential of a 6-7, 270-pound running back machine in Darnell Washington. And we're Super Bowl champions, man. We got a chance to do this in Dynasty. We still got four years left. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't even get to see the stats. Super Bowl MVP, Darnell Washington. Appreciate former lineman of the year, Robert Hunt, who has retired after 10 seasons. Going out as a Super Bowl champion. We only need one signing this free agency period. When you strike gold, you don't let it lead the building. So with our first pick, which we are on the right to pick at 32, we're going to go with the top tackle. That is defensive in this year's draft. Arthur Foster of the West Virginia. Letter grades are all right. It's more so the combine where you see him start to kind of pull apart. 310 pounds, but he had the fastest 40-yard dash at his pro day. The bench press numbers are great. Feels like a great athletic profile to get a dev trade. We need to get back in the business of getting guys with dev trades. I'm sick and tired of the cold streak we are of top picks being normal devs. Second round, we don't even really need a corner. He's just it's just one of those stacks. We got B zone A catching, but the athletic profile, elite acceleration, agility, second in the 40 yard dash, first in the three cone, second in the 20 yard shuttle, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark. Everything you're looking for in a baller, and uh, we'll take advantage here. All right, one of these times, we're going to draft one of these freak athletic linebackers. We need that third linebacker, even though we don't use it a lot. It's still a starting position. And 
Big time athlete. Almost 4 3 speed here on Brett Kincaid. Three cone, 20 yard shuttle. Looks good. And finally, a draft class where we're not lied to based off of athletic testing numbers. It's UDFA, but three A's. Athletically speaking, kind of butt cheeks, but I'll go I'll go three A's. UDFA. So then look at the draft class. Arthur Foster pop 75 hit it F. Hoskins 78. What value in the second round? A lot of times, man, when you get those 70 plus, 75, 76 plus second round, third round corners, they are normal dev. They don't have the dev traits. We got that and everything with Hoskins, which I love. Kincaid, 70, a little bit on the lower scale, but he does have the hidden dev. Got a couple death picks there, but look at that. Oglesby was UDFA, 76 overall. No dev trade or anything like that, but three A's. Definitely was standing out. 99 break tackle. Let's go. We got something here. Will Shipley, we got a little smash to his dash. Saints had a, you know, okay draft. Buccaneers, same kind of, of discussion. A couple 70 pluses led by a just outside top five pick at quarterback, Blaine Sinclair. Falcons with a modest draft as well. A couple 70s. Honestly, I'd give uh, advantage this year to the Carolina Panthers, the good guys. We got a pretty good start here to year seven defending our Super Bowl crown as we're seven and one sitting atop the NFC South. Double the wins of second place. However, we do with the rankings, a little bit weird. Like we're not usually a heavy rushing offense versus pass. We've been more pass than rush. And that's kind of flipped on its head a little bit this year. At least defense still playing elite as the number two defense in the NFL. Now, we don't get a lot of money. So looking at our contracts here, Isaiah Wheeler, got to get paid for sure. Uh, we're going to have to go probably player friendly. Let's get him locked in for the remainder of the rebuild. Three years, 78. He broke out last season. Got to kind of pay him. But everyone else, unfortunately, just don't got the money. Gardner, kind of rotational linebacker. That pop. Mingo has been a big time player for us. And Montague, obviously, is a, a really, really nice guy that we've drafted. Homegrown talent. Just don't have that kind of financial resources right now. We finish year seven with back-to-back -back 15 and two seasons. I don't know what the hell happened with the passing offense. 25th in the league. Under 200 a game. I don't know what caused this shift in philosophy. I'm a little bummed out about it. Because obviously we want this offense to go through Bryce Young. Didn't have any award winners, but Colt Fisher was runner-up for Defensive Player of the Year. So I'm excited to see what his stat line looks like. Oh yeah, Barton crushed it, but look at that Fisher. The X-Factor plays like an X-Factor. 77 tackles, 14 TFL, 17 sacks. Wheeler with 8, 7.5 for Derek Brown. Two picks, Barton Hunter. On the receiving end, just quick kind of going through. Oh, almost 2,000. I mean, for how bad it was, if we're pretty much counting those as 1,000-yard seasons, which we will take. Ryan the ball, though, is where the team And I mean, it's just we do have something special. Will Shipley with the yards. Darnell Washington, 14 touchdowns. There is absolutely something here with the Panthers playbook with a fullback slash power back. They absolutely I – mean, Bryce Young wasn't even that bad. 29 touchdowns, was 10th in the league, so he is technically top 10 quarterback in that category, even though we definitely want the passing yards to be up just a little bit. So there's no doubt about it, we are the team no one wants to see. We are the Chiefs in the NFC right now, so we have the Giants. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get off the train tracks or get ran over. We ran them over 35-21 with a player of the week performance. Bryce Young, four touchdowns, 269 yards. That's what we like to see. Standing between us and a repeat Super Bowl appearance is the Commanders, 12-5, led by James Pierce, who's the reigning defending defensive player of the year, 24 TFLs, 15 sacks, an absolute baller. They also have a top five offense. What? Excuse me, but I got a sneak a peek here. Okay, so they got Trevor Lawrence, somehow a quarterback, James Pierce, 99. They got a superstar D-tackle known as Deshaun Kirk. So they've drafted, well, Joe Alt. Ethan Burke, Sam Cosme, Manuel Forbes still there, Kirby Joseph, Zach Frazier, superstar tight end, Michael Pittman, Gene T. Okay. That's a pretty good team. It's a really good team, man. Uh, especially getting the role on the, uh, the AFC side that there's no Kansas City Chiefs. That is a frustrating result. Overtime loss. And, I mean, you just can't have... That kind of performance from Bryce Young. He knows what it takes to win a Super Bowl, and it's not two touchdown, two picks in the championship game. Damn, missed opportunity here. Uh, damn, shout out to the Commanders. Went on to win the damn thing with Trevor Lawrence, Super Bowl MVP. Took him going.
and leaving Duval to reach his fullest potential. Now, just before he leaves, he's been a great servant to the squad. Jonathan Mingo finishes his time up here with the Panthers. 652 catches, 8,000 yards, 65 touchdowns. And I think if he can manage to do that IRL over a nine-year period, you know, he'll go down as one of the more underrated Panthers of all time. For HC, you got two bargains, I would say. We got Aries Griffin, 2580 Stardust. So that's the Montague replacement. Obviously, we're losing about 6-7 in terms of base overall. But he costs a third of the price, so kind of plug and play at that spot. And we really only now have Brian Thomas Jr. at wide receiver. No Moose Muhammad, Mingo's left. So we do need two wide receivers. I did focus scout wide receiver for the upcoming draft. But we need that third guy. So I just went out and got ourselves a big-time athlete. No depth or anything crazy like that. But at 6'5", 235 for Marco Wood. You're kind of... Reminds me of Chase Claypool a little bit. 92 speed, 90 agility, 91 acceleration. Just kind of stats you could work with here a little bit. I think, uh, you know, it's 83 catching. He can, he can be a good wide receiver three. Big, unique buy type. Very similar to how we utilize Darnell Washington on the offense. All right, so two things coming into this draft. One is I think we got Aaron Donald regen here and Pat Rutledge. In another world, in another universe, I'd be trained. I'd find a way. Look, just 293 pounds, and he runs a 4.55. I I so badly want to trade up, but we don't really need it. <sighs> like, that guy is going to be insane. I, I need to see it. Because I, I also got to watch. We need a wide receiver, though, and this guy also looks amazing. Kyle Sullivan, very high hopes that he's going to be a freaking really good wide receiver. But the fact of the matter is, this Rutledge is the best D-tackle prospect I've ever seen. So now we're caught between a rock and a hard place. Do we go with the very good player prospect at a position of massive need for us because we need a new starting wide receiver? Or do I go with a truly, truly generational, once in a 10 rebuild type player? Or do I find somehow, some way, how can I get pick 10 and pick one in this draft? Is there a way? And there's just, there's no way. They, the Saints know what they have. I've offered three first round picks, two second, I've literally offered all I can in the way of picks. They have no salary cap, so I can't throw any players in. We're just, we're going to have to, see, we're, not only are we going to have to sit back, we're going to be able to watch it and see it twice a year, whatever the fuck they're about to get at D tackle. I was able, I think I actually overpaid, but I was able to trade up with the Bengals. They get that wide receiver that I really want. It costs us to move from pick 30 to pick 10. A second round pick this year, a fourth round pick this year, a third round pick next year, and in two years, our second round picks. A lot of decent range picks, but we're going to go get a guy that I think is going to be a stud at wide receiver, which is, I mean, we need a starter right now. It's just one more time, I had to go back. I was like, what, what do they want? Bastard. You bastards. All right. Well, we'll let them have them. Best, maybe the best defensive player I've ever seen generated. Congratulations, New Orleans. We got, I got to go look at that. But we got Kyle Sullivan, who I think is always going to be very, very good. We paid a good price for him as well. I think we, again, I think we overpaid to move up to this spot. But for the importance from where we're at in the rebuild, for getting a guy that I think firmly is going to be able to start day one, have a high ceiling, big time, fits the profile, elite speed, hidden dev, uh, worth the price for what he's going to bring to the team for the final three years of this rebuild. But man, oh man, in a perfect world. Honestly, I think I could have made a trade if the Saints had some salary cap. Because if I think I could have, you know, packaged future first, a bunch of future first round picks. And throwing in some of our depth. Like, I have Lassiter, who's a depth corner. He's, he's a contract year. 87, 88. Would have thrown him in. Would have thrown in maybe a lineman or something like that to try to sweeten the deal. But they just had no salary cap. So I only had picks, really, to use in terms of negotiating. Oh, it's annoying. That would have been a hell of a way to cap this off. All right, so looking at the draft recap. We didn't really have any good picks. So after the first round, we were just kind of going through the motions. Nothing there, really, that uh, is even really worth talking about. But we can be very much in love with our first round pick. 76, hidden dev, wide receiver. Looks very, very good, man. I'm thinking, 
you know, everything we need. We got to replace a superstar in Mingo. I think we might have a chance at a superstar here in Kyle Sullivan. But let's preview the other rosters just real quick. And obviously finishing up with the Saints. The Bucks had a decent draft again, picking near the top of the table to get a 74 tackle. You'd think they'd probably want to do maybe a little better with that type of investment. Looking at the Falcons, not bad. 75 guard there in the second round, getting some value. But this is what I want to see. The Saints, they still got a 75 core in the second round. But Pat Rutledge, 83. You already know, I don't even need to look. I mean, we will. But it's an X factor, right? The best, I honestly would say, you know, we've seen the, uh, yeah, of course. We've seen some of like, the, the freaks that get generated. You know, the 6'7", six, 6'9", six, wide receivers and stuff like that. But this guy is truly a freak. 6'1", 293 pounds, 92 strength. 89, I mean, these are boosted up here a little bit. So that'd still be 86 speed, 87 acceleration, not 89 tackle. The power move, finesse move, great for a rookie. 84 pursuit. That is easily the best defensive prospect I've ever seen generated. And I freaking wanted a bad man. I tried. I tried. At the midway point of year eight, five and one. Competitive though in the South. Falcons and Bucks only one game behind. Look at the Panthers. Again, our passing offense has fell off the face of the earth. Everything else, pretty good. But that is 187 yards per game passing. Why? Nothing has changed. You've, we're the same offense that was the fifth best passing offense in the league. We got to be smart about how we handle our salary cap. $67 million available. And we got some big name players. For, I mean, you got to get Fisher. He's the first one. You get him dropped, and then you kind of work with whatever budget you got left. Only $27 million remaining. Um, I mean, we'll get Jimmy Reese locked in for the remainder of the rebuild. That brings it down to 15. Wagner. We got the Horn Dog. I mean, we just. The Horn Dog and Derek Brown, I want them to make obviously the whole rebuild if we could. But the fact that between the two, for one year, they want forty million dollars between them. They're pricing themselves out. That's the that's the fairest way to put it here. And the fact that you know we got Wagner here on the O line, but I'm going to be able to probably get an eighty on the open market for half that price. We got it. We got to manage our money, and maybe at the end of the year we'll get a bump up in salary cap, and we could try to keep. Either A, the Horn Dog, or B, Derek Brown. You see it. I hope you do. Sullivan, the top 10 pick. You got an X under his feet there. Do you know what that means? Because I know what that means. We got ourselves out of the box out of the University of Michigan, an X Factor wide receiver. What does this red X mean? Does that mean that this kid is freaking elite? Yeah, it does. Which brings more questions. The fact, why is our passing offense so bad? Bryce Young is one of the best quarterbacks in the game. Brian Thomas Jr. is like a 96. And now we have an X Factor and we still can't throw the football. And we finished year eight. Pretty good. 15-2. Two. two years ago, won the Super Bowl. 15-2 last year. Championship game. 14-3. So we're in the ballpark. And the passing offense picked it up a little bit. Still, I think, underperforming slightly. One thing I will say is a bummer. The last two seasons, I think it's probably because where our team's at in terms of rating. Haven't had one breakout scenario. Haven't got any of the good XP, like, little little pop-ups here. Like, sometimes you get trench boost, which if that hits, you get 10,000 XP for all your linemen. You know, different things. Like, haven't got any of that. Haven't got a single assistance through this game to help boost my team up, which has been a little bit of a bummer. But you know what? We've been winning a lot of games, and we won an incredibly tight NFC South here, year eight. Finishing one game above the 13 and 4 Falcons. So look at the stats of the year. Shout out Horn Dog in a con oh, I gotta bring it. I mean, it was really him and Derek Brown. We might get enough money to bring back one of our veterans. And the fact that Horn Dog's still playing like this. Oh, why, oh, why? I mean, shout out Travis Hunter also making the short list down there at nine. Defense played very well. Look at the box score numbers. I would have dreamed about this three years ago when we were struggling. 15 TFLs, 10 sacks, Derek Brown, and what could be his final year? In Carolina, 10 and a half for Foster, 11 and a half from Fisher, 15 from Wheeler. And on the interception front, Horn Dog, DB of the year. Maybe a little bit of a low standard being set there, but three picks, four TFLs, 76 tackles. So it just needs to be acknowledged that uh, Patrick Mahomes is 
on the Cardinals now. Okay. Great. In the NFC, they also got Micah Parsons. They're the team that'll bid us when we wanted him. Okay. But the thing that caught my eye was our rookie X Factor, Kyle Sullivan, was runner up for best wide receiver. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. He was also on the short list for Offensive Player of the Year, which was interesting. Ran away with the Offensive Rookie of the Year voting. And something that could make us feel slightly better is that Pat Rutledge, generational guy, didn't even win Defensive Rookie of the Year. So maybe he's, at least he's not thriving and elevating that Saints team the way that I thought he would. I got to see these wideout stats. Bryce Young, top 10 in passing yards, top 5 in touchdowns. That is what we want to see here for our franchise quarterback. We ran the football kind of kind of well. Uh, Darnell Washington still thriving. Nine touchdowns. He's like a 50-some overall. But, that you know, cheese. Move him to your fullback, power back, and just reap in the rewards. But Kyle Sullivan, the rookie, 98 catches, 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns. For the X Factor out of Michigan. That is what we you know. I'm going to reward him with a cap. He put the old C on his chest right there. Sky's the limit. We do have two. We got two years left. Two years of his peak. He might have a shot. If he plays like this, we might get a very quick, very late game 99 type player to pair with Brian Thomas, who's been very good, very consistent, and also very close to being in that 99 club. And we start our playoff journey, a rematch from last year's NFC Championship game, the 14-3 Panthers against the 12-5 Commanders, who have a top 10 offense, top 10 defense, the number one rushing defense in the league. But we handled business here. I mean, it wasn't even particularly close. They got 10 points in garbage time, 28-21, a decent game, decent showing there from Bryce Young, two touchdowns, one pick. Will Shipley show in the backfield, though. He gets the game ball. The NFC Championship game is set. Panthers-Vikings, Arch Manning, 30 touchdowns, no interceptions on the season. And I know a DB duo, Travis Hunter and the Horn Dog, that looked to get his first pick of the year. And it was very close. We pulled ahead 14 points in the fourth. Bryce Young needed to be good. We didn't get that pick on Arch Manning, but 335, four tuds for Young. Avant, the role player, Sullivan, the X-Factor. All stood up, all balled out when they needed to. And the vet, Brian Thomas, get a touchdown as well. As the Panthers are back in the Super Bowl, this time against the Houston Texans. Now, I'm not going to be fooled by the 9-8 record. We've done a 10-year rebuild with the Houston Texans. We know that if they can keep that core together, they're going to be a very talented team for this decade-long period. Quickly look at the roster. They have 99 X-Factor and Derek Stingley, 99 Superstar, CJ Stroud, Will Anderson, also 99. So they've done exactly that. They've kept that core together. That's the same way that we rebuilt them. They drafted Dayon Walker to Kentucky. He's an X-Factor attacker. They got Nicholas Singleton, who's arguably one of the most talented running backs in college football right now for Penn State. They got themselves a drafted, generated X-Factor pass rusher. Okay. Jackson Powers Johnson. Christian Harris is an X-Factor at linebacker. Tank Dell is still there. I mean, this, this CPU did a hell of a job. I did this rebuild. It is very difficult to keep those core players, those original OG players together the way that they have. Look, they got a superstar corner, superstar safety. They got Mitchell Evans, talented tight end at a Notre Dame. They got Dave Batista. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Peyton Will. All right, they, you know, hey, respect. That's a legit Super Bowl opponent right now. But when we won the Super Bowl two years ago against Kansas City, I said we had a chance to turn this into a dynasty. Dynasty, in my opinion, for these 10-year rebuilds is three Super, three Super Bowls in a 10-year period. I think that's enough to quantify a dynasty. Like, you know, you're kind of looking at what the Chiefs are doing with Mahomes right now as the pace car of, of really what you want to try to get there. So that is what we we're trying to achieve, that third Super Bowl. We got two years left to do it, three including this season. We start with the opening touchdown of the game. I do think pound for pound we are a better roster than the Texans, but... At the top end, comparing the best of the best, you know, we both got a lot of heavyweights. And this is going to be a heavyweight bout. Going into the third. Low score, man. 14-7. Enough that a swing could drastically change this game. A turnover right there puts the Texans in an easy scoring position. And they hold us to a field goal attempt. But we get them on a fourth down convert. Oh, my God. See, what are we doing? Why was there no... That was just weird. Very weird. Defense reigns supreme, and we're going to give credit to our defense. And what is likely, I don't want to say probably, but it's likely 
the final year of the Horn Dog and Derek Brown. We got to look at their stats before we hit it. But I don't think I'm gonna have enough money to bring back both of them. I don't even know if I'm gonna have enough money to bring back one of them. And Derek Brown had a hell of a year. And JC Horn's coming off a DB of the year performance. But in their final year together, the cornerstone pieces of this defense play their best game, win the Super Bowl with the defense. And that is our second. We got two more years to get that third and try to make this thing a freaking dynasty. But I'm happy with how everything played through. I'm happy with the fact that even though I missed out on a generational of generational type D tackles, we went out, we still were aggressive, traded up, got an X-Factor wide receiver who lit the league up on top of having Brian, you know, it, it rejuvenated. The passing offense was non-existent in year seven. We go and get an X-Factor, absolute dog, gets the job done. Very interested to see who, uh, you know, we would give uh, Super Bowl MVP to. Definitely wasn't Bryce Young. Did not play well at all. Two picks in the game. Will Shipley, not bad. You know what? We might just want to give it Darnell Washington, a sneaky Darnell Washington touchdown because you know he's an important player. But, I, you know, I think uh, for my money, two and a half sacks. This game was led by the defense. Isaiah Wheeler. I'd give him the MVP. And we botched that a little bit. I want to see Derek Brown's career stats. He retires on top. Two-time Super Bowl champion coming off career year. 15 TFLs, 10 sacks. You know what? I'm in, I'm in the mood right now. One year, horn dog, retires a Panther. So we lost a guard to free agency by paying J.C. Horn. Able to sign a very affordable one here in Dewan Humphrey, 2677, with a dev trait, which means unless we're thinking big picture, which at this point the rebuild can't really. We're going to the draft first round. Let's get a Derrick Brown replacement that can start day one at D-Tackle, and let's go repeat and get that third Super Bowl. So I think our best shot at a good D-Tackle is not a D-Tackle at all. It is a DN that we're going to kick into D-Tackle, which hopefully we'll also get usually a one to two point overall boost on top of their base rating. We got McIntyre here, A-Tackle, b pow. I mean, there's two, but you look at, I mean, uh, Peters also looks pretty close. Athletically speaking, though, Hmm. I think we'll go McIntyre. Let's go. Surprise, surprisingly, stud corner. Still on. I mean, hey, what? Are we, second round steals at corner. It's kind of, you know, one in three drafts. You're gonna find two or three corners that are still there in the second round. This is the ass in the second round. This is almost a third rounder. But we got Glenn Forbes in the slot. 95 acceleration, 92 agility, 94 change of direction, 90 speed. Hit a dev slot at LSU. Gives us a little depth there because likely Horn Dog got one more year. So we're thinking about the kind of the corner room come year 10, the final year of this rebuild. So I really like the first two picks. Rest of the draft, I, you know, is what it is. Kind of been a theme, but 76 hidden dev corner, 74 DN, and let's watch this magic. Hopefully we get this rating up to a 76 and do justice by trying to get a true successor to the legendary Derek Brown. So he goes from 74 up to a 76. Let's go. What a pick. Saints did work. Top five pick. End up getting a pass rusher. To pair that with the D tackle they got last year. Okay, they could be making big moves on the defensive side. Bucks had a bunch of high round picks and you know, did all right. I'm not really worried about their draft class. And finish it up with the Falcons. Great value beyond the first round. 76 running back, 75 linebacker. 7-1, year 9, sitting the top of the NFC South at the midway point, and the offense, the defense, is all executing at this point, looking for that third Super Bowl. I think, good, a good shot here this season. Now for contracts, $51 million is where we get to decide who can make the full rebuild. we got to be smart with how we invest this money. I'll say right now, I mean, Iki Aquano is the, the biggest one. we got to get him locked in. We do not have a replacement whatsoever. Very difficult to replace a play like that going out. Wukuba at safety hasn't really made a lot of plays for us. Pete Weber at tight end. Good rating, but that cap it is insane for a guy that's pretty much been out of ceiling for a minute. Horn dog is the horn dog. I think this is where we got to commit our money. If he's going to go the full rebuild, he is the identity, the heart and soul of the defense. I'd love to find a way. To maybe keep Wilp Shipley here for the whole rebuild. We only need one year. So even though he's looking for three, we're only going to use him for one. We'll wait and see where the salary cap's at at the end of the season. But if not, I mean, we do have an 80 running back sitting behind him. We do have Darnell Washington who can chip in as well. We close out year nine, 14 and three. Another NFC South title, our fourth in a row in a very competitive division where once again the Falcons thought 
you know, in any other division, they're one and away with the division. But 13 and four is second. Saints had double digit wins as well. So the NFC South, the close out this rebuild has never been more competitive. Bryce Young, this is actually his best finish in the MVP voting, finishing in at the top five. He had a hell of a year. Third in yards, inside the top 10 in touchdowns. QB rating was great. Touchdown interception ratio was great. On top of getting lineman of the year, shout out Jimmy Reese. Uh, maybe it was against my slightly better judgment to pay a center, to bring back a center, because it is and has been. Last couple of battles, the least important spot in the offensive line. Well, we get rewarded with what is likely going to be a super dev trait type boost. We get defensive rookie of the year, a D-tackle Alex McIntyre. Gigantic shoes to fill, stepping in for Derek Brown, but a hell of a start for his career. As he had a very impressive 17 TFLs on 48 tackles, four sacks as well. Six and a half for Foster, eight and a half for Wheeler, 15 and a half for Colt Fisher. Barton led the team in tackles again. Horndog with two picks. Definitely don't like seeing Travis Hunter with nothing on the score sheet. Is what it is. On the receiving standpoint, Brian Thomas, 1,300 yards, 15 touchdowns, 11 and 7 for Sullivan, which we're very happy with. Will Shipley led the line as well. With nine touchdowns, 1,100 yards. You gotta get a little more Darnell Washington in there. Come on. I'm gonna do this now in case I forget, because I know we brought him back for one year, but he is probably the only player that is close to maybe retiring. And I don't wanna have a Derek Brown situation where we can't see the stats. So it's Horn Dog, 678 tackles, 21 TFLs, 25 picks in his career, trying to enter the conversation for the GOAT DB in Panthers history, which, I mean, let's be honest, not particularly high bar. Like, who's the best DB ever? Josh Norman? I don't know. A tough matchup in the division round. Kicking our feet up. We're going to be fully rested off the bye week. We got the 88 overall, 10-7 New York Giants. We have a top 10 passing offense, top 10 defense overall. So not a bad team. It's going to be tough. But I don't think it should be that tough. It it shouldn't have been an L. Shouldn't be a one and done wet fart of a, there's how you defend it as a one seed, your Super Bowl championship, an overtime loss. That is the second time. We have lost in overtime to end our playoffs. And, I mean, Bryce Young just didn't really have a great game, which has been, honestly, far too far too often in the playoffs. I mean, not to dog him because he's obviously been very good at times, but I do think it is fair to say that when we lose, it's not Bryce Young's – not it's not not Bryce Young's fault. And I think when you have a franchise quarterback, $200 million, $300 million, whatever it is, they just – can't cost you games. They need to elevate. You can have everyone else let you down. The defense cannot show up. The run game can be non-existent. You can pin it on that, but you can't pin it on the quarterback. And in a couple of our losses, Bryce Young has just had pedestrian games. Oh, we were worried about the horn dog. When in reality, it was the hyper weapon Darnell Washington retiring. Damn. Shout out the Jags winning the Super Bowl, man. They saw Trevor Lawrence go elsewhere, end up winning the Super Bowl. They were able to find a way to rebound. Drafted Quinn Ewers out of Texas. And it finally paid off for him. We'll say, unfortunately, in terms of, you know, old dogs leaving, we don't have the money to bring back Will Shipley. So that's a little bit of a bummer. He's our starting running back for most of this rebuild. Shout out him for, man, carving out a career. It was like a fourth or fifth round pick. Normal dev. Draft behind Chuba Hubbard. We went with him over Chuba Hubbard. And ends up finishing his career with 9,800 rushing yards. Just shy of the 10K mark. 82 touchdowns. Hell of a career. We gave it a free agency. We got three needs. Right, tackle, tight end, safety. Those are the three spots. Now, safety is what I focus scouted during the draft. That's where I go in the first set. We got tight end, Jared Swift, 26-78, star dev. Tight end's not a huge focal point of the offense. Offense just runs through Brian Thomas and uh, the X-Factor out of Michigan. So, I mean, for the all, you know, you're just kind of a role player, but that's not a bad role player. And for our right tackle, we got John Ford, 78, star dev tackle, 64309 out of Clemson. So, getting... Stack it up on those Carolina area players. And now we're just going to hopefully find a safety, be it free or strong, that can come in and start for us at free safety. So we scouted the safeties of this year's class. I got Charles Woodson. Not that Charles Woodson, but I mean, maybe Charles Woodson the second. Let's get a kid. Cool storyline. First, second round talent. First, second round projection. Three Bs and a C. Great profile as well. 6'2", 224. And he ran the fastest 40-yard dash at his position from the Pro Day the 20-yard shuttle looks decent. Vert jump. Got to be happy with that. However, we just got the strong safeties. And Oscar Johnson, 6'3", 216. A, three Bs out of Cal is a top five true talent. Combine, pretty pretty good. I'm not going to, you know, it's what you're looking for. Where is he going in the mind? I mean, we might as well just go all in for him in the draft. And he's currently projected to go 16th to the commanders. Straight up. Straight up ahead of them. 
Maybe we'll go up to like, hey, let's see what the Patriots are looking for. Or the or the Cowboys or someone. All right. Overpay, but I'll give them whatever they want. I'll, I'll do a slight little cheese here. Give them a gigantic war chest for the 10th pick in the draft so that we can 100% guarantee we'll get that safety. Yeah, I'm excited to see. This guy's going to be so freaking good. If he's normal dev, I'm going to scream. This guy should be... I'm not going to say generational because the combine's not an S tier, but those key ratings, I've seen enough safeties. I've needed enough safeties to see. Like, that is as good of key ratings as I've seen in a minute. And let's go. Oscar Johnson, hidden dev safety, day one starter to help us try to win another Super Bowl here in year 10. And just because we got a little uncertainty in the backfield here, losing both Will Shipley and the super freak down at Washington. We'll go Crompton. Looks pretty. I ah, thought he was going to be. That mid-round power back that always has a dev trait. I think the rating will be good. I think it'll be like 72, 73. All right, drum roll, please. Johnson, 80. Let's go. 73 for Crompton. Got a 70 wide out there. That is what we need. That is day one start. That's going to be an impact playmaker for us. Ah, the defense, 90 speed, 90 acceleration, 92 hit power, 83 pursuit. Like, this is... This was, a, like, it's Jeremy Chitt. This is what we kind of thought. I mean, Jeremy Chitt also was maybe a better athlete as well, but still... This guy can play freaking linebacker. Multi-position weapon. Saints draft was pretty ass. Bucks draft was, yeah, not bad. Four picks all in the 70s. Hell of a job there. And the Falcons had a modest draft to say the least. I'm giving the advantage to the big impact playmaker. Let's go Panthers draft. Top in the division again. Biasly, of course. So here's our squad. Year 10. This is what we've been able to develop, build, accomplish with the Panthers. Obviously, we've had some placeholder type players but on the offensive line reese and aquano the two superstars homegrown i wide receiver brian thomas jr part of our first draft class 99 x factor sullivan traded up to the top 10 to get him 91 x factor and old man bryce young he is an old man now 32 entering his 11th season is also a superstar x factor on the defensive end cashed in our coach ability to unveil a dev trade and Oscar Johnson, X Factor out the gate, top five true talent in the draft at our big position in need doesn't get much better than that, especially for year ten. Outside of that defense is filled with homegrown talent, linebacking core led by Landon Barton, who's been tackle machine. We drafted him as a twenty year old out of Utah, and I think when all is said and done, we'll look back at his stats. He's gonna have some big time numbers. Bethel homegrown talent, ninety three at safety. Horn Dog going the whole rebuild, eighty seven superstar Travis Hunter. Has been very good. This actually, this maybe just the first year, not second year, he lost his X Factor, but he has been regarded as the top corner in the NFL, really, after a year or two that he's been in the league. We got Hoskins 85, Fisher 99, X Factor, D line, all home, a grown, Wheeler 95. It's the best, very good defense. I don't want to say the best defense we've had yet in a rebuild, but I think out of all the 10 year rebuilds we've done, this team might stat maybe not at the peak maybe not the best team we've had at the single one solo season out of this is our fourth 10-year rebuild so we've done 40 seasons but i think pound for pound this team could probably hold their own against any of the other 10-year rebuild teams who do you think let me know in the comments if you watched all of these rebuilds so far if you have missed some of the other ones go check it out please support the channel which out of which you know not necessarily which has been the best rebuild because i think personally we've had you know, I like the Darnell Washington effect, but I do think when we did the Bears, the very first one, we got the 300-pound quarterback. That was kind of fun, Vernon. But which of our rebuild teams would be, like, if we took the best, the best single season, the best Super Bowl win season, who was the best one that we've done so far? I got them here in my notes, just real quickly. The best, statistically, we were 15-2, and two, year six here, and beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. All right, that's the Panthers rebuild. Looking at the Bills rebuild, we had a 16-1 season in the Bills rebuild. Ended up beating the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl. For the Houston Texans, our best season was 14-3, where we beat the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl. C.J. Stroud won MVP that year. And for the Chicago Bears, our best season was a 15-2 year four, but we didn't even win the Super Bowl that year. Our, our best Super Bowl season that we would have had would have been a 14-3 Super Bowl year. So, I I don't know. I mean, that 16-1 Bear, uh, Bill season looks pretty good. 14-3 C.J. Stroud MVP season looks pretty good. But, I man, I don't know. I think we got something here with the Panthers. We finished year 10, 12-5, our sixth 
NFC South title of the rebuild. Top five-ish offense, top 10-ish defense, even though... So I had to show a little bit of... I mean, there's no way with, with the secondary that we have. We just went on and got an X factor. We have become with the 32nd ranked pass. I don't believe that for one second. And Bryce Young ends up finishing on the MVP shortlist, but never won an MVP. Never really was that close to winning MVP, but you know what? We need it. We've won MVP in a lot of the other rebuilds. Josh Allen, the Bills rebuild. CJ Stroud won it. Not every time you have to have that like generational type quarterback. You can just win with a good quarterback, and that's what we did here with Bryce Young. This is his final season here of the Rebuild. 3,900 yards, 27 touchdowns to only three interceptions. Coach of the year for the third time goes to Dave Canales. And while we didn't have any award winners, still had some decent seasons. Zeke Oglesby, UDFA, turned into starting running back. Not bad. Giving me like Philip Lindsley vibes. We got 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns for Sullivan, 1,007 for Brian Thomas Jr., who's going to have some pretty big-time numbers when we look at his career stats. To this point, on the defensive side of the ball, Barton with another just immaculate season. Great decision to pay him when we did. Colt Fisher finishes with 11 and a half sacks, 10 from Wheeler. Not much, a little bit of a drop-off from the interior. Pretty brutal, though, that we only have two total interceptions. I'm starting to see why we have the 32nd ranked passing defense, at least in terms of box score turnovers. But talent-wise, you know, a little disappointing, to be honest with you. Summarizing the career stats, Bryce Young finishes this 10-year rebuild with 42,000 yards, passing 315 touchdowns to 86 picks. Also chipped in 3,300 yards rushing and 17 rushing touchdowns. Given that, with two Super Bowls, probably Hall of Fame, assuming that he plays for another five years, probably gets that closer to 400 total touchdowns. Yeah, which is a great turnaround from where we started, the perception of Bryce Young when we started this rebuild 10 years ago. Brian Thomas Jr., our big pick. We did not have a first-round pick in our very first draft, but we got him at pick one in the second round, and what a career. I mean, I don't know if he eclipsed Steve Smith, but this might be wide receiver two all time for the Carolina Panthers. 876 receptions, 11,000 yards, and 95 touchdowns. Sullivan in three years averaging 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. He's on an insane pace. That would be pretty cool to see where he would be at the end, but I mean, he's still got another 10, 15 years. Lander Barton. Well over, I like that, 1,069, nice. Total tackles, 54 TFLs, 15 and a half sacks, 8 picks. Uh, Horn Dogs, 750 tackles, 25 interceptions on 21 TFLs. We got 76 sacks from Colt Fisher, 73 and a half from Isaiah Wheeler. That's all homegrown pass rush. And, and, you know, they battled. They stuck with us when the 3-4 wasn't really working. Then we pivot to a 4-3, and we really unlocked their potential. Uh, 25 picks, as we said, for Horn Dogs, 16 for Travis Hunter. Maybe a little underwhelming, but truth be told, I mean, if we were playing, trust me, someone that is and gets really good production, regardless of difficulty, when I'm actually playing games, we would probably had a legendary run for Travis Hunter. But the reality is, I've yet to really find a good sim defense playbook that gets consistent interception numbers on a year-end year. And maybe Dallas, just given the fact that they get a, you know, A, it's Dallas, so they give them the cheesy playbooks, but B, Dallas usually has insane interception rates anyways. Maybe, you know, if Travis Hunter ended up in Dallas, he would get five, six picks a year for 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Something crazy like that. But ultimately, from like a talent standpoint, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous player. And did good enough at corner that it never once crossed my mind. Even when we had some lack of depth. You know, the year that we lost uh, Jonathan Mingo. We could have pivoted. And, and honestly, you know what? It might have made it slightly more entertaining. If I can go back, maybe make that switch and put Travis Hunter at wide receiver but he's just been so good and at that point i actually think what happened he won like db of the year the year Ming so like it wasn't like i'm gonna take the db year and move him to wide receiver he was he was good with where he was at and if we stuck travis hunter at wide receiver while well, that might have been a little more entertaining to get the two-way player type scenario in this rebuild we probably wouldn't have been aggressive to go get that x factor out of michigan i think we i think we were better for that however in hindsight from an entertainment standpoint maybe switching him to make him wide receiver too when it was just uh, Brian Thomas Jr. We could have done that. Could have done that. But uh, I'm not. No regrets. No regrets. Plus, I know if we did that, the stats would have got screwed up. His DB stats would have been erased. I've done that before uh, with other positions. So, again, eh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how much I regret that decision. If we win another Super Bowl, I won't even think about it anymore. So, we're at 12-5 and five and we're taking on the 10-7 LA Rams in the first round of the playoffs. They're not that bad of a team, but... I do think we are we are checking out we are levels above the and we end on a fucking wet fart of a result. 28-25 loss. 
the one seed. I mean, we've choked it back to back years as a one seed. Wow. Close. And again, is Bryce Young just not playing the best? 257, three touchdowns. Good. Two interceptions when the other quarterback doesn't turn the ball over. Not good. Damn. Ryan Thomas in his final game went off. Appreciate that. Cole Fisher got a sack. Damn. So with only two Super Bowls, I don't think we can necessarily say that we achieved a dynasty status here with the Carolina Panthers, but we ended up having a hell of a rebuild, drafting well, getting some legends, getting some studs. Darnell Washington, we remember you out of nowhere. That was pretty fun, but just back-to-back, -back, one and done. Year 9, year 10 as the one seed. Ah, man. The dynasty. That's what we're fighting for. And we went 0-1 every time. It's brutal. But at the end of the day, shout out Travis Hunter. Shout out these freaks. Fisher, who's an X-Factor generational player, out the door. Shout out Johnson, generational player, out the door. Shout out to Sullivan. Gener well, I'm not generational, but he was an X-Factor, out the door. We, we got some absolute studs, some absolute heavy hitters. And I, I very much enjoyed this rebuild. I hope you guys did as well. I will say right now, the next rebuild that we are going to be doing is going to be, I think, the Browns. I, I think right now we're at a point, and I talked about it in the last one, I, I want to do the teams that don't have first-round picks because, obviously, these take a while to record. So, like, the more we delay until the 2024 NFL draft, because once the first round is set and we get all these exciting rookies and their new landing spots... Like, that's when you're going to want to dive into all these other teams and do these 10-year rebuilds. But at least these teams that don't have first-round picks, they're probably not going to get someone at draft time. I mean, maybe someone slips in the second round that's, like, hyped up and, like, there would be a scenario there, like a quarterback or something. But most of these teams that don't have first-round picks, they're not going to have something that happens on draft day that's going to be like, we got to go rebuild them right now versus whatever craziness happens in the first round of the draft. So the next rebuild, 10 years, will be the Cleveland Browns, which will be actually pretty fun because it's 10 years. I'll tell you right now, we're not staying with that pervert at quarterback. So we'll figure something. Is it Jameis Winston? Do a James? I, I don't know. I have no idea. But that is going to be the next 10-year rebuild. But I say right now, outside of that, let me know in the comments section below if there's another team you want to see pre-draft get a 10-year treatment. Let me know in the comments section below. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace. I love you. Have a good one.